Hi, how you doing? So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use contrast to create an image that looks like it's almost popping out a little bit. So what I mean by that is, is that when we're doing pictures, what we want to try and do is create a 3D effect to our images. And when it comes to portraiture, we really, really want the eyes and the nose and the mouth to kind of pop out a little bit more, just so it gives us that three dimensional look, especially if you're printing images as well. So this technique is called the 2010 rule and it's a really simple technique but it has a lot of impact. So usually when we're doing pictures after we've retouched, we've color graded, we've done whatever we wanted to do, an important step is dodge and burn. So dodging and burning is basically darkening darks and lightening light. And the concept behind that is to create tones that are more three dimensional basically. It just gives your, your picture a more of a three dimensional look. So for instance, if I come down to here and come to the curves panel, and if I just create a simple S curve, there we go. We can see on that, that we've just created a little bit more contrast, but you can see what that's doing is it's actually darkening a lot of the black areas as well. I could pull these blacks back up, but then that's just gonna create a flatter look, but it does a little bit, doesn't it? You can see around here, it adds a little bit more of a three-dimensional look to the image. There we go. Let me just get rid of that to the side. I'm gonna keep that because I think that does slightly improve the image. But before I do, I'm gonna show you the before and after. So this is the before. And if you look at the eyes and the nose and the mouth, it's mainly there that we're looking. That's the after. Now you can see straight away that they look a little bit sharper if I come in a little bit closer. I am at about 300, 400%. And I did shoot this about 13 years ago. So the camera is not the biggest sensor. So it's not going to be uh, massively sharp at this close, but you can hopefully see there that is a big difference. Okay. Right. So the first thing you want to do then is once you've made all your adjustments and you've done what you wanted to do, we want to create a new layer. And to do that, we want to create what's known as a stamp layer. So we'll hold shift option command and E if you're on a Mac, if you're on a PC, then it will be Shift, Command, Alt, and E. And that will give you this layer up here. So let me just turn off the actual sharpening. I'm just gonna bring that down here so you can see, there we go. So the first thing you wanna do then is come up, come to Filter, and we wanna to go to Sharpen and then select Unsharp Mask. So what we're trying to do is create this contrast so we can sharpen our image. And like I said earlier, it's the 2010 rule. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the amount up to 20. And we are also going to put the radius to 20. And the threshold is going to be zero. So I'm just gonna type in 20 there. It's sometimes easier if we do that. Now, if I click on this here, you should see the before and after. So hopefully you can see the difference what that's making already. So it's sharpening the image quite a lot, but it's doing it through contrast. Because when you sharpen a picture, it's basically using contrast to make the picture look sharper because technically it can't actually sharpen an image. It does it by tricking the eyes, by making the darks dark and the lights light. So let's say okay to that. Now what we wanna do is we wanna have that effect, but we only want it on the face. We don't want it all around here because like I said a, a minute ago, it's gonna be darkening areas and we don't necessarily want that. So we're gonna hold Alt or Option and we're gonna come down to here and select the layer mask. That is now an inverted layer mask, so it's black. I'm gonna select the brush tool and this time you can actually have the hardness on all the way up, opacity up and flow up. Make sure that your brush is set to white so the foreground set to white. And now we're gonna make the brush bigger. And all I'm gonna do is just select the face. So I'm gonna click once there, and once there. So that's now brought in that sharpening effect. And you can see there what that's doing. Okay. So let's do the same again. So we're gonna to have to make another stamp copy. So Shift, Option or Alt, Command and E. And then again, we're gonna come up to filter and we're gonna to go to sharpen and sharp mask. And this time we're gonna select 10. So I'm gonna bring that 
the right down, and then 10 again for the pixels. So let me just type it in because it's a lot easier. And if we look at the eyes here, you can see before and after. So obviously this is a little bit less than the previous one, that's fine. So let's select OK for that. And again, let's hold oh, oh, Option key down on the layer mask. So we've got an inverted layer mask. And what we're gonna do this time is just sharpen around the eyes, nose and mouth. So let's just paint that in. So around the eyes, around the nose and around the mouth. So you can click on the backspace and it will show you where you've painted. So if you go over or you miss parts, then you can just paint in the areas. And there we go. So if we look at that, we can see that if we take these away, you can see what that's doing. There's quite a lot of adjustment there, isn't there? So the original image actually looks really, really blurry, doesn't it? And this just brings it alive. Now, saying that, I probably, I have, just gone a little bit too far with that. So I can bring this opacity down and obviously control how much of that I want to come through and just really get that so it's fine-tuned. And you could also make them a smart object as well. That's probably a better idea because then you can just click on it and go back and make changes as you need to. So if we group these together, so I'm gonna hold the Shift key down, press Control, Command G, just to group them together. You can see there's the before and there's the after. And again, we can come to the opacity here and just bring this down so we're we're not getting the full effect. So I would say about 60% looks good. There's the before, there's the after. So you can see that that has a big impact and we're using contrast to create the sharpness and it just makes your images pop a little bit more. It has a big, big impact, especially if you're printing. So that is a, a really, really cool little trick that you could do. So if you've got portraits and you wanna make the face just pop a little bit more and you can do that trick and like I said earlier just play around with this so you can uh, just fine tune it and get it exactly how you want usually less is more so there we go I hope you enjoyed that take care and I'll see you in the next video bye bye